Welcome to the intermediate class today. Today's lesson is going to be based on restorative practice, so you will need to have some props. Now I've got to the side of me some foam pads, a couple of bricks, a chair, blanket, and a couple of yoga straps. Now, if you haven't got these items, then you can replace them quite easily. Yes. But I'm sure if you look around your house, you'll be able to see that there are quite a, a lot of options so that you can replace any of these props. The We're going to come for a standing Uttanasana. So this can be challenging um, because of the tightness in the legs. So I'm just going to get a couple of supports. Now you can use a chair to place your head onto a support or you can use something like this. Now I just want you to see this action. Now I'm actually using quite a high support and the reason for that is that I want to keep and maintain this dorsal spine just this area where we were sitting. You've got to see that you're grounded down into your foot bones very strongly and just be there for a moment. Just see, you want to hang on your shoulder blades, literally. So when you're here, you've got to get that lift all the way through the center of the body. And then we come forward and as we come forward, we want to see that we maintain that depth in the dorsal spine. Taking the hands down onto the support, onto the floor. And then just resting the head down. So it's a really nice action where you can work your dorsal spine. So you walk your hands forward. If you're using a chair, that's fine. You can rest your head onto a chair. But really what you want to do is be in a position where you can hold it for a while. So it's not something that you're going to jump in and out of. Okay, so hopefully you've got something you can put your head onto and see that you are working very strongly in your legs. Now, when you work into your legs, you've got to imagine that outer hip area has got to reach down to the outer foot bone. It's a very strong action. You've got to direct it. You've got to really stamp that down very, very strongly. And then be sure that you are getting all of this really nice opening in your chest. So you've got to see that you're not just dropping down you're not just dropping down. You are getting some connection in this area. So it's such an important practice, the Uttanasana action, just to get some work on the legs. Now, when you're there, be observant of your breath. You need to think about your breath. You have to see that you expand your breath. Okay, and now releasing. Well done. All right, so you're going to need your two foam pads so that you come for a setu banda action. Now, this action is really, really very, very nice. So once you've energized your legs a little bit, we're going to now energize the upper body in this way. So this upper body moves very deeply within. So the end of the mat really picks you up, picks the whole of the body up. And then we come for this action. Now I'm using a rolled mat because it kind of goes along the spine. And where the pelvis wants to wait and tip itself to the floor, what happens is that you've got to line the sacrum. So when you're in this position, you're lining the sacrum. And if you're in a softer support, it has its place, but it is a little bit different. The result, the outcome is a little bit different. So see that you're connecting your front body, side waist to your back body. Then when you're in this position, observe your breath. So your diaphragm is nicely opened now. 
you will dig it down into your heels very strongly. And find the adjustment where you can sink the side waist to the spine. Now when you're breathing, you've got to see that you're breathing and broadening the upper abdominal area. So be in that position for a little while. So those of you still getting your supports ready, come into it. If you're already into it, then you can start really enjoying the benefits of the Sitta Bandha action. So Sitta Bandha is a really beautiful action to get the opening of your chest cavity but also it teaches us so much about our posture and how much you can line that sacrum. Are you tipping the pelvis? So we have to find out what's happening in our body. This is really about discovering your breath, but to do that, you need to see that you find that stability and strength in the body. So a soft inhalation, soft exhalation. So just be there for a few more moments, really enjoying this stage of the practice, this stage of the pose. Okay, and releasing. So we're going to release the action now. So roll to your right side and come into a seated position. And you're going to need to have a belt as well. So we're going to have this here. Now if you've got a blanket you can use a blanket for your head. Now if you're challenged by your knees, I know there's a few of you in the class that do have this difficulty with the bending of the knee, then you can always take these feet a little bit higher, a little bit higher onto a bolster as you come back over the support. So you can still see, and you can also have a wider stance here. So, let me just do All right, so we're coming into a Supta Baddha Konasana action. Really nice action. Now, when we come into this action, move my support here, normally we would go along the bolster, but this bolster is now lifting the back of the pelvis. Now you've got to soften the groins and take those legs down. Now the legs will stay put if these groins remain short. So remember what I was saying, you've got to see that you take the stress out of the belly and you've just got to just slowly, slowly, slowly see how you can soften the groins and be in this position. So try not to grip your bottom. One thing that people want to do in this pose is to grip the bottom. Try not to grip the, the buttocks and just be in this restful position. Okay, so when you're in your your Subtabada Kadasana, so it may be that you're on the support on a bolster, whatever you're using. So those of you who are challenged by this, then you can always use this support like this and still get the lift in this way. In this way. It's a really nice way of working. So 
Those of you who are challenged by this pose, then this is the other option. Now just take a few moments, soft inhalation, soft exhalation. Soft inhalation, soft exhalation. And see that the breath is settling, but not only settling, but deepening. So try not to over adjust now. Just let yourself be. Soft, smooth inhalation, soft, smooth exhalation. Just take your time to keep that lift of the spine, the softness in the belly. Okay, soft inhalation, exhalation. Okay, and now release in. All right, very well done. Okay, so you're going to bring those legs together, release the belt, and come up. Come up into a seated position. Well done. All right, so for those of you who have got foam pads, this is good. <laughs> If you haven't got foam pads, then you can find a couple of bed pillows would do. A couple of settee cushions would be fine. Now you want to find a wall or somewhere you can take your legs. Even a unit, a door, all of these areas would be okay. So I'm going to take myself over to this wall. Okay, so just take a look. Now when I take the legs up the wall, I'm going to take the foam pads as well underneath the pelvis so we're in this position like this and like this now it might be that you really find that taking the four foam pads underneath the pelvis is a step too far and don't worry if this is the case because you can come a little lower, that's no problem. So really important that you get that nice lift and connection. But again, now, if you're able to touch, some surface would be good. You want to see that your heels are glued. You walk them up, you walk them up, you walk them up and they're glued and then you let the whole of the abdomen release. So again, walk up the legs a little bit more, a little bit more until your bottom comes off the support. See that the glue is there and they will slide down a bit, but you want to see that the action comes in the lower back and the sacral area so you can really feel those actions spreading your toes, keeping the lift through the center of the body, and just be there. So you can see the shape of this is so important for your pranayama, such an important practice. Okay, come on then. If you haven't already, then get your props or you're probably finding out how to work in this way. And this is fine. <laughs> so just see that you are finding a space Get your legs right up into that Viparita Karani action. And then walk those feet up, walk the heels up, and then see, can the abdomen become weighted? Can the abdomen become weighted? Can the lower back become quiet and soft? Yes. And get that connection. And be aware of your inhalation and your exhalation. That's such an important 
practice. So normally in this pose, I would say, you know, you could stay here for a good five to 10 minutes and you will notice if you give yourself an extension of time that the connective tissue will start to give in and release and relax. And this will hold you in good stead for your yoga practice in general. But also it teaches you to relax. There is a chance that the body can let go of all the tension and the stress, all that held, overly connected muscle fiber. So whilst you're here, if you're finding it's too much, if you're finding it's too high, then go down a little bit. Remember, you can do this on a stack of cushions, that's no problem. See that you try to get some use and utilize everything in your home for your practice. So soft inhale, soft exhale. Okay, so we're going to come out of the Viparita Karani now. So just take your time with this. And once you release all of those foam pads from underneath the bottom, just push yourself away from whatever support you're using, put your feet flat to the floor and just rest the back down. Rest it down, this is a very important stage, don't rush. Because a lot of these actions are very, very strong and you want to digest, you just want to digest it. So just take your time and just rest the belly down. Okay, well done. All right, so the next part of the sequencing way, we're going to come for a very quick Shavasana because after that, that was active work. So when you actively work in your pranayama, then you need to just settle and rebalance everything again. So another lying down pose without any support and just let your back find the floor space. Don't let the pelvis tilt down. You've got to see that you engage. Remember what we were saying earlier. Now what I want you to do is to just bend the legs a little bit. Now have the heels, remember we we're talking about the glue, have the heels glued to the floor and try and pick them up. And this will give you a little bit of connection or with your abdomen. And keep that connection as you take the legs down. Once your legs are in this position, you just let the feet roll to the side. And just let the facial features quieten, the eyes releasing. Now just question some of the areas in your body. Now I know from my own experience that I lie in Shavasana and I think, oh great, I'm here now. Fabulous. But actually you still have to engage with relaxation and it's one of the hardest poses because it's active but in a very different way. It brings in mind, body, breath control. So just assess where you are in this pose and this is about scanning the body. So scan from top to bottom. Just release the facial features. So releasing the shoulders. Now remember the shoulders are very set in their habit. So sometimes you have to give them a little bit of a sigh, give them a little bit of a release. And then releasing in the belly, releasing the feet away, letting the arms be turned so the palms are facing up towards the ceiling. And you have to see that you find yourself eventually in a deep relaxation. So you're not asleep, but your attention 
is very much in the present moment. So just keep in your Shavasana for a few more moments. Sometimes it can take five minutes quite easily to come into a good Shavasana because your job now is about letting go. It's about not rushing to the next thing. It's about being very present. This kind of work will really help with your immune system and your vitality. This kind of work is just like going on a holiday. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. You can change your location, but if you've still got the stress in your body and your mind, it's not going to be so restful. Sure, it's really good to change our space. It's really good to go to different places and to be in different areas. But ultimately, you have the ability to give yourself a really good break and a really good holiday. So if you'd like to stay in your Shavasana, then do so. I hope you've enjoyed today's session and I look forward to seeing you very soon. Namaste.